Let us pray. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he. Humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Zechariah 9.9 O Lord Jesus Christ, when you entered Jerusalem, great crowd waved palm branches and cried, Hosanna. Save us now from our sins and make us to rejoice in you, our only Redeemer. Through our mercy, O our God, you are blessed and live and govern all things, now and forever. Amen. Let us continue to worship God by singing hymn number 19, All Glory, Lord and Honor. We'll have the first part of Hoshana Sunday. We'll be following this book, this book, it is, which is placed on the pews. the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, to the end of ages. Amen. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that has come and is to come again in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy art thou, O God. Holy art thou, mighty Lord. 
holy art thou immortal lord the lord the messiah holy art thou o god holy art thou immortal lord the lord the messiah holy art thou o god holy art thou immortal lord the lord the messiah Lord of mercy upon us O Lord accept our praise and worship and have mercy upon us Glory to you creator of all Our father in heaven page number 7 page number 7 masiha ye kan manidayaya shishu gal ka ge bhagya mai dushin kaluda mele riyaven urshale minerunalli saitin gambal paidangal tirumunnartha varchalunnu ushana uyarathil ushana david sudana kartanamathil varunavan vaalta dushin karuda melere urshale me nerunnalunna deva sudane kaanumbol vismai kyata varundo saitin gombal paidangal tirumun stodichavar paadu Ushana David Sudan Kartan Namathil Varunavan Vaalta Petavan Krobe Shrafagal Vanangum Bhayangaranaya Thanikyustudhi Karunayodigatil Thanirangi manushya vadaram tanai sehiyon teruvil unnigalum tirumun stodichavar chollunu
page 10. Page 10. Malakamar Susha Chena Deva me Ni Perishudanagano Roben Mar Vartana Belavane Ni Perishudanagano Safan Mar Thunder Vishuta de Agoshikita Marana Milata Vene Ni Perishudanagano Vishwasa Sabil Satan Hangalai Yangla Prata Church Olono Milkue Negrosika Padamashika the Murani Nangalor Karnaja Yaname Malaka Mar Putuna Devome, the Perishudanagano, Admira Gashikina Belevane, the Perishudanagano, Agnim and Mar Mahitigiri in the Maranamilla Tavene, the Perishudanagano, Sosa Savias and the Anangala, Yangla Prati Chulunu. ശ്രദ്ധിക്കുന്നവമേ <laughs> ഞങ്ങളോട് <laughs> Page 13. Yangar Tavum, Yangar Deum, may name come to Karne Alam, Yangla Pratan Locator, Yangra Susha, Kaikulaname, Yangra Tavum, Devome, Yangra Sahaitan Ivan, Nakam Yangla Vishakaname, Yangra Tave, Yangra Susha, Ninikaram Yum, Yangra Namaskaram Niniku Prasadaguru, Yangra Patient English Vigadium, Idikaname, Kartave, Nina Nangalum, Karanangalum, Sahangalum, Krubegalum, Devi of Mind in the Sakaladanangalum, Bellahina Ride, Yangra Mailum. Belehina Dulan Yangra Varkatan Mail, one now is such a Neku Parkumara Ganame. Amen. Please be seated. Now we shall hear from the Word of God, first and second lessons. Today's first lesson is taken from Zechariah chapter 9, verses 1 to 12. This is the Lord's message. He has decreed punishment for the land of Hadrak and for the city of Damascus. Not only the tribes of Israel, but also the capital of Syria belong to the Lord. Hamath, which borders on Hadrak, also belongs to him. And so do the cities of Tyre and Sidon, with all their skill. Tyre has built fortifications for herself and has piled up so much silver and gold that it is as common as dirt. But the Lord will take away everything she has. He will throw her wealth into the sea and the city will be burned to the ground. The city of Ashkelon will see this and be afraid. The city of Gaza will see it and suffer great pain. So will Ekron 
and her hopes will be shattered. Gaza will lose her king, and Ashkelon will be left deserted. People of mixed race will live in Ashdod. The Lord says, I will humble all these proud Philistines. They will no longer eat meat with blood in it or other forbidden food. All the survivors will become part of my people and be like a clan in the tribe of Judah. Ekron will become part of my people as the Jebusites did. I will guard my land and keep armies from passing through it. I will not allow tyrants to oppress my people anymore. I have seen how my people have suffered. Rejoice, rejoice, people of Zion. Shout for joy, you people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He comes triumphant and victorious, but humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The Lord says, I will remove the war chariots from Israel and take the horses from Jerusalem. The bows used in battle will be destroyed. Your king will make peace among the nations. He will rule from sea to sea, from the river Euphrates to the ends of the earth. The Lord says, because of my covenant with you that was sealed by the blood of sacrifices, I will set your people free, free from the waterless pit of exile. Return, you exiles, who now have hope. Return to your place of safety. I tell you now, I will repay you twice over with blessing for all you have suffered. Here ends the first lesson. Second lesson is taken from the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, verses 5 to 10. Hebrews 5, 5 to 10. So Christ also did not take upon himself the glory of becoming a high priest, but God said to him, You are my son, today I have become your father. And he says in another place, You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. During the days of Jesus, Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with loud cries and tears to the loud cries and tears to the one who could have say, who could save him from the de from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and once made perfect. He became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him and was designated by God to be high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Here and so let's. In your light we see the light, Jesus, full of light. It's your light that shines upon our world, light of
Jesus Christ, born of the Virgin Mary, baptized by John, have mercy on us. We magnify you, O Lord, our King, the only begotten Son, Word of the Father, Lord Jesus Christ, immortal in your nature, who is born of the Virgin Mary, for the life and salvation of all mankind, without change of nature, you became the Son of Man, and was crucified for us, and strangling them under the foot, and destroying him forever. We are one of the Holy Spirit King, and I worship and glorify Holy art thou, O God. Holy art thou, mighty Lord. Holy art thou, immortal Lord. O Lord, Holy art thou, O God. Holy art thou, mighty Lord. Holy art thou, immortal Lord. O Lord, Holy art thou. with the essence of your holy gospel, the teachings of the apostles, the richness of your divine wisdom, and the gift of your Holy Spirit. Enable us to obey your commands gladly and to fulfill your holy will perfectly. Amen. From the epistle of St. Paul the Apostle to the Colossians, chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. Praise to you, Lord of the Apostles. O Lord, grant us your grace to discern your word. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him in to reconcile all things unto himself by him, I say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, Yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If he continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard and which was preached into every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Offer sacrifices of praise to the Lord. Come and worship in His holy courts. Brothers and sisters, let us stand in silence, awe and reverence, and listen to the proclamation of the living Word of God from the Gospel of Jesus Christ our Lord. Peace be with you all. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, which proclaims life and salvation to the whole world, as recorded by the Apostle Matthew. In the days of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the word of life 
God incarnate of the Blessed Virgin Mary, it happened in this way. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her herd cold by her sign. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt the fowl of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others caught branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus entered the temple courts, drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did, and the ginger children shouting in the temple courts, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. Do you hear what these children are saying? They asked him. Yes, Jesus replied, have you never read from the lips of children and infants, your Lord have called forth your praise. And he left them and went out to the city to Bethany, where he spent the night. Peace be with you all. Let us pray to the Lord for his blessings and mercy. O Lord, who is the source of all blessings, help us and bless us. Help us, Lord, to continually offer praise and thanksgiving. Let us praise and adore the one whose holiness is praised above by the seraphim and revered by the cherubs, glorified and praised below by the children in the singing of Hosanna, but humbled himself to ride on a donkey and honored by the disciples in offering their shawls to walk on. We ascribe praise and honor to him on this day we commemorate his triumphant entry to Jerusalem in all the days of our lives, now and forevermore. Amen. O Lord, the Messiah, almighty, merciful, and a lover of humankind, you came down to your people to guide them, to honor them. You asked before your redeeming suffering, for a cold before your suffering, and your majestic entry to Jerusalem was foretold by the holy prophets through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. The tribal forefather, Jacob, prophesies that the scepter will not be removed from the Jews until the great landlord comes. Godly musician David proclaimed the forthcoming Hosanna festivals of children's praises in his songs. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, wake up. O hand of God, wake up. Great prophet Isaiah had foretold you to gain strength. Prophet Zechariah had spoken of this festival when a humble king comes riding on a colt. The truth of their allegory and your everlasting word was fulfilled in you. In your mercy you came down as a lowly human, but without sin. You descended to the world, saved the mankind from its fall into eternal death. Your presence removed the darkness of ignorance, and you accepted joyfully the praise of the innocent children. O Lord, the source of all blessings, at this festival we pray for your mercy. We offer ourselves and our possessions for your glorious service. Help us to lead our lives convinced that we are your possessions. Transform us to bear you 
and be suitable tools for your service. We cast our minds to sing praises to you like the children of Jerusalem. O Messiah, the King of glory, visit your church and fill it with your gifts. Preserve it from attack, sustain it in peace and unity. Confirm your promise, decorate its children in holiness, and protect it ever in your mercy. O Lord, bless the work of your church in homeland and abroad, and enlighten the hearts of all mankind with the light of the gospel. Help us to be worthy to celebrate your festival in unglorious second coming, in the company of the saints, and to praise and glorify you, Father, Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Lord God, who makes us in the righteous, pardons our sins and makes us holy, blot out all my sins. Through your loving mercy, good Lord, wipe away all the sins of believers. O oh Lord God, in your mercy and goodness, remember us, our parents, brothers and sisters, our bishops, clergy, teachers of the faith, and all faithful children of your holy and glorious church. Lord God, comfort us in body, mind, and spirit. Shower your mercy upon us. Be the remission of our sins and make us all worthy of the good end that is set for all children of peace. To you we offer praise and thanksgiving. Osho wawakul seban laomi. Weak and sinful as we are, let us together confess and say, Holy is the Holy Father. Amen. Holy is the Holy Son. Amen. Holy is the Living and Holy Spirit. Amen. We believe the one true God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things of the land of his birth, believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of God, and for all worlds, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. He was crucified for us in the days of fortress Pilate, suffered, died, and was buried. The third day he rose again by his own will, ascended into heaven, and is the third hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead, and was seeking the living in the way. Believing the Holy Spirit, the Lord will give up life, the saints of the Father, who the Father has done. and apostles, we believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one's baptism for the remission of sins, and look forward for the resurrection of the dead, and a new life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Dearly beloved, as announced earlier, today we remember Marthoma Theological Seminary Kotayam in our prayers and also we are requested to support seminaries activities through your generous giving. A special envelope is placed on the pews and I request you to wholeheartedly participate during the effort. Now those who are celebrating their birthdays please come forward for Thanksgiving prayer.
Let us pray. Good and gracious Father, we thank you again for this beautiful morning and for the ability to come here into your Holy of Holies and praise your holy name. Father, we pray for these, your dear children, who have crossed an aisle, another mile marker in their lives, trusting in your goodness and your providence, Lord. We ask and pray that you continue to reach out your right hand and bless them. Walk with them in all areas of life, Lord. Wherever they may go, wherever they may do, or whatever they may do, Lord, be with them. Allow others to be able to see your goodness on their face, Lord, and allow them all to praise you. Lord, through sickness, through happiness, through all our areas of life, Lord, be with them and allow them to be able to leave here praising your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Those who have come prepared for the wedding anniversary Thanksgiving prayer may please come forward. No. While singing hymn number 13 from the worship order, Jesus shall reign, offer tree will be collected.
Let us pray. Good God, on this day, the crowds offered their coats off their back for the Son of God to walk on. They waved palm branches, honoring his presence with praise and shouting of Hosanna. Today, holy God, we honor you with our faithful tithes and offerings, especially for the Marthoma Theological Seminary, which it so desperately needs. Lord, bless these gifts and bless that institution. We submit these gifts before you as a humble token of our love and a public display of our affection for our King of Kings. Bless us all. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. A very good morning to you all. Respected Ipan Achen, my dear St. Thomas family, I want to again praise God for this blessed Sunday, this blessed Palm Sunday in which we're able to come together in this Holy of Holies and praise God. I hope that this Holy Week will bring you spiritual brightness and strength throughout your life. For today's morning devotion, let us open up our Bibles to Matthew chapter 21 and let us reread verse 5. Look, your king is coming to you unassuming and seated on a donkey, and on a colt the fowl of that donkey. Let us pray. Father God, your word is true and you are faithful. You promised salvation through the Messiah, and today we remember that Jesus fulfilled the Old Testament prophecies of our promised Redeemer. Lord, we acknowledge our need for salvation from our sins and rejoice that Jesus is our deliverer. Good God, as we celebrate him today as king and ask that his kingdom come into our lives, help us to meditate on these words, these moments so that we can have a clear mind and a confident heart to praise you now and wherever we go throughout eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. The Universal Church celebrates the sixth Sunday in Lenten season as Palm Sunday. And we set this day apart to remember the contrasting events that will happen in the final days of Jesus as they go from triumph to tragedy. We stop our hectic lives to remember and relive these occasions that brought out deliverance and salvation from the world of sin. We observe and relive this week not to place Jesus' death and resurrection, but to remember that we are committed to being freed from the death of sin and selfishness and risen in Jesus. All of which, as we will say during our Holy Qurbana, is the healing of our body, mind, and soul. Dear friends, attentive participation in this Holy Week, I say that again, attentive participation in the Holy Week in whatever vernacular has been woven is meant to help increase our faith and strength as God's children. I cannot stress that enough, but this Holy Week that lay ahead, we should remember some key ideas. One, it's a week of remembrance and appreciation. It is a week of remembrance and appreciation. Two, it's a week of thanksgiving. Three, it's a week of repentance and reconciliation. Four, it's a week to keep Christ's new commandment of love. Five, a week to deepen our faith and strengthen our relationship with God. Dear friends, we have all 
fallen short of the glory of God. And we must set aside our busy schedules and pray here in this church and grow as a community filled with gladness with what God has done for us through His precious passion. During this Lenten season, we have been called to remember Jesus' final walk of 144 kilometers from Galilee to Bethany. Today, we recall that final three kilometers from Bethphage to Jerusalem, where he would ride atop a borrowed donkey into Jerusalem's gates. Dear family, in those days, kings used to travel on horseback during wartime, but preferred to ride a donkey in times of peace. Jesus entered the holy city as a king of peace, fulfilling the prophecy of Zechariah, a prophecy that was heard during our first lesson. Rejoice, your king comes, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey. He will take away the chariots and the wartime horses, and battle bows will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. It is in this that we meditate on our theme, Jesus entry into Jerusalem, an alternative style of kingship. We see the preparations that have been put forth for this most beautiful event through this simple act. Today, our Lord and Messiah was given a humble but impressive reception as he was raised atop a colt, a young donkey less than four years of age, the gospel mentions that this donkey, this animal, had never been ridden, which is reminiscent of what had happened in 1 Samuel chapter 6, 6, when the Ark of the Covenant was returned to Israel. In that passage, a never-before-yoked milk cows bore the cart which held the Ark of the Covenant. Dear family, how spectacular it is to find that our Lord was not pulled into the gates of Jerusalem, but he rode atop of an animal that had never been ridden into Jerusalem. How beautiful it is that the God who had descended from heaven, who had spoken creation into being, is now being humbled to borrow from that spoke, what was spoken into being. He was humbled to borrow that which was spoken into being. Dear friends, Jesus triumphed today through humbleness with followers singing Hosanna, God save us. Those followers with their sacrificial animals ready to atone for their sins at the temple were by their side. Dear friends, little did they know that the true power in the world's, world's paschal lamb was riding on a colt right next to them. How much power was riding next to them? However, unlike the crowd, the disciples were no stranger in understanding that they should deny power and celebrity that they should deny power and celebrity and understand the humility that was seen in Christ's actions, in Christ's words. Surely, humility denies the enticement of power and popularity. Humility denies the enticement of power and popularity. In the first century, the lure to choose power was ever-present. The, the Jews were expectant of a king, a man who would liberate them, from the, liberate the Holy Land from foreign power. The Romans, the Babylonians, etc. They hoped their liberator would be Jesus. How little did they understand who Jesus was? As Passover approached, Jerusalem would sell 
to 10 times its normal population. The inns would be full. The Temple Mount would be at capacity. It was the most important festival for the Jewish people. Thousands of prayers ascended to heaven yearly as the Hebrews prayed for their liberator king. And it is in this moment that our gospel reading describes a donkey. A few days before Jesus entered in Jerusalem, Pilate would have entered into the holy city on a horse, a message that the Roman power and dominion was strong and ever-present. While Pilate chose a horse, Jesus, the Prince of Peace, would choose a donkey. He entered in as a servant on a beast of burden. He entered in as a servant on a beast of burden. He refused any earthly might and power and didn't accept a throne of this world as we remember during this Lenten period. He knew suffering lay ahead and he laid his power down to pick up a cross so that we, we could be free. What do we learn on Palm Sunday? What is it that we learn on Palm Sunday? That humility is the way of the kingdom and popularity and power is the way of the world. This is a type of kingship that our good Lord shows to us on a morning like this. Dear friends, knowing this type of humbleness, I want us to take away a few points this Palm Sunday, and, and especially as we enter into this Holy Week. One, we must prepare our hearts during this Holy Week. We must prepare our hearts during this Holy Week. We must be prepared beforehand and instruct ourselves just as Christ instructed his disciples. We must be ready to surrender our lives to Jesus during this Holy Week and welcome him into all areas of our lives as our Lord and Savior, singing Hosanna, God save us. Singing, Hosanna, God save us. Remember that he is the one with whom we will be spending eternity. I think sometimes we lack understanding that. Even myself, when I drive or when I'm walking, I think to myself, what is going on in my life? Where am I going? Is it the way of the world or is it way of God? The promises I make, the things that I say, all are for the glory of God. Dear friends, the one with whom we will be spending eternity with will ask us. Let us be reminded further that our careers, our education, our finances, our homes, our families are all basics that are needed in our lives. But they are temporary. I am reminded of an incident involving the father of Constantine the Great, who was the first Christian Roman emperor. Constantine's father ascended to the throne right after Diocletian, and he too was a pagan but he had a soft corner for Christians. It is said that when he ascended the throne, he discovered Christians held several important jobs in the government and in the courts. And so by executive order to all those Christians, he declares either give up Christ or give up your jobs. A man who had a soft corner for Christians said, Either give up Christ or give up your jobs. 
the great majority of Christians gave up their jobs rather than disowning Christ. Only a few cowards gave up their religion rather than lose their position. The poor was pleased that the majority who showed the courage of their conviction gave up their jobs. My question is, would we? Would we? He dismissed those, my dear friends, who actually gave up Christ. And he returned every single person who would not disown Christ. He told them, if you are not true to your God, you will not be true to me either. If you are not true to your God, you will not be true to me either. My friends, my dear family, prioritize. These days as we have been going through the Lenten prayers here in the parish, and at homes, we have had minimal to sometimes moderate attendance. It may be due to language barriers. It may be due to other inconveniences. But I ask and I pray, prioritize, especially in the coming days. You know what is coming. Prioritize and place Christ as King and then let Jesus be our secondary concern in these fleeting moments of the temporary. Be convinced that God is King. Only when we have done this will we find true peace and happiness in this confused and complex world. Two. Be prepared like that abject cult that carried Jesus. Be prepared like that abject cult that carried Jesus. In the gospel account we read this morning, and what will be assigned in the evening, Jesus didn't look like a king. He had yet to wear a crown. No army was marching behind him yet he was lauded as king. Dear friends, when Christ rode into Jerusalem on that glorious morning on the back of a donkey, and everyone was waving palm branches and throwing their cloaks and garments on the road and singing praises, we have to ask ourselves, do you think for any moment that that donkey thought it was for him? Do you think that donkey thought the waving of palm branches, the throwing of garments on the road was for him? As we have been blessed to carry Jesus into the world, we may receive the same welcome that Jesus received on Palm Sunday. Still, we may also meet the same opposition, the same cross, the same trial later. Like the donkey, we are called upon to carry Christ into a world that does not know him. Let us remember that a Christian without Christ is a contradiction. A Christian without Christ is a contradiction. Such a person betrays the Christian message. Hence, hence, my dear family, let us become transparent during this Holy Week. Let us enable others to see Jesus' universal love, his unconditional forgiveness, and his sacrificial service in us. In, in us. 
as I close this morning. Humanity seeks peace with the Creator. Humanity seeks peace with the Creator. In the past, God accepted the offerings found listed in Leviticus 17 for the atonement of sins. Today, today we remember that God arrived in Jerusalem amid His people in the person of Jesus, just as we read in Hebrews 1.1. And as the perfect Lamb, His final steps to the cross would free us, free all of us who sincerely, with all our heart, believe in His truth from the slavery of sin. Indeed, we've always known that the wages of sin is death. But who could free us from the grip of despair? Is it our own? Is it our family? Is it our parents? Is it this community? No, it is Jesus. This all said, we must understand the reality of Palm Sunday and how it really speaks to us. Are we willing to follow Jesus in the church and in our daily life? Are we willing to empower ourselves to stay focused on Him even when the future is frightening or confusing? Do we believe God has a plan in our lives? Are we willing to serve Him until the day when His plan for us on earth is fulfilled, as we read in today's Sedra prayer? These are the questions we must ask ourselves these holy days. Let us take this time to have a fresh look on this ever so familiar day of singing Hosanna, God save us, and recognize throughout this week what was heard by the prophet Isaiah. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that made us whole, and with his stripes we are healed. Dear friends, Jesus entered Jerusalem, and we remember it on this day. Let not Hosanna, God save us, be said in vain, but believe it with all your heart. Let us pray. Blessed are you, holy God, for in Jesus Christ, you came to rule in our lives, not as a king, but as a humble servant riding upon a donkey. Lord God, we ask that you enter our hearts this day with your glory so that we may greet you with shouts of praise. Give us strength this week to be mindful of everything you have done, to read each prayer, to kneel in reverence and give you glory. Thank you, Lord, for all you have blessed us with. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Those who have come prepared to partake in the Holy Communion, may please stand up in your own places and repeat after me the prayer of confession.
I confess that I have sinned against you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in thought, word, and deed. I am sorry with all my heart for these my sins. I believe in your promise that you will receive all those who truly repent. O Lord, who is merciful and full of grace, accept me even as you accepted the publican, the woman who was a sinner and the thief on the cross. Comfort me with the consolation of your word. O Lord, grant that your holy body and holy blood in which I now partake may redeem me from judgment and condemnation and bring me to life and wholeness. Amen. May God Almighty be compassionate to all of you who have truly confessed your sins. God has freely forgiven your sins to make you worthy to partake in this holy communion. Amen. Dearly beloved, pray with me that this service may be acceptable to the Lord. Lord, we humbly knock at your door. We have come to your house and we pray for your blessings. Sanctify your servants by your truth. O oh Lord, hear and answer the prayers of your people. Your promise where two or three are gathered in your name, you will be in our midst. We pray that you send us the gift of the Holy Spirit to make us dwell in us, your people, as we dwelt in the apostles. O God and Lord of all, make us worthy to greet one another with the kiss of peace, freed from all insincerity and united to love. To you, O Father, to your only Son, and to the Holy Spirit, we give you praise and glory, now and forever. Love of the Lord God, let us greet another in peace. and sisters, having received this holy and divine peace, let us bow our heads before the merciful Lord. Gracious Lord, we bow before you. Merciful Father, you dwell on high, yet condescend to look upon things that are lowly. Bless now those who bow their heads in your presence with the grace of your only Son, with whom and with the Holy Spirit you have accept all prayers and glory, now and forever. Beloved brothers and sisters, let us participate in this holy kulbana, which is now offered to us with commitment, reverence, humility, purity of heart, love, true faith and devotion. To God the Father, to whom all things belong, is offered the sacrifice of grace, peace and praise in the spirit of unity and concord. 
the love of God the Father, the grace of the only begotten Son, the communion abiding presence of the Holy Spirit be with you all, dearly beloved, now and forever. And also with you. May our hearts be with cross on high. Our hearts truly have with the Lord. To sing praises and worship the creator of all things. Assuredly is good and right. Who is adored by the heavenly hosts, sun and moon and all the stars, the earth and seas and all that dwell there, angels and archangels, thrones and powers, cherubim and seraphim ever proclaiming. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Heaven and earth are full of His glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is He who has come in the name and name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When the sinless one of His own will chose to suffer death for us sinners, He took bread in His holy hand. Bless, O Lord. He gave thanks, blessed, sanctified, and broke it and gave it to his apostles, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. In the same manner, he took the cup. Bless the Lord. He gave thanks, blessed, sanctified, and gave it to his apostles, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is the blood of my new covenant which is shed for the many, for the forgiveness of sins. Amen. Thus, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. O oh Lord, we remember your death. We celebrate your resurrection, and we await your second coming. May your blessing rest upon us all. O oh Lord, as we remember your death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and look forward to your second coming, to judge the world in righteousness and truth. We offer this service and sacrifice to treating you, not to deal with us according to our sins, but according to your abundant mercy and saying, Have mercy upon us, O Lord our God. We give thanks to you, we praise you, we glorify you, and we worship you. O source of all goodness, have mercy on us and bless us. Answer unto us, O Lord, answer unto us, O Lord, answer unto us, O Lord, and by your grace have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. May the Holy Spirit sanctify this bread that it may be, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. May the Holy Spirit sanctify the wine in this chalice, that it may be the body, blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. O Lord, sanctify the bodies and souls of those who receive these gifts, that they may bear fruit for the stability of your holy church. Established ever firmly, your holy church, founded on the rock of faith against which the gates of hell shall not prevail, and preserve her to the end from strife and error. To you, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, we offer praise and thanksgiving, both now and forever. Amen. Look with mercy, O Lord, on your holy church throughout the world, and all the bishops who bear the burden of leading and guiding her. Especially our Father in God, Theodosius Marthoma Metropolitan, the moderators of CSI and CNI, Archbishop of the Anglican Communion, our suffragan metropolitans, Iaki Mar Kurilos, Joseph Mar Barnabas, our Episcopas, Thomas Mar Timotheus, Isaac Mar Philexinos, Abraham Mar Paulus, Matthews Mar Macarius, Gregorius Mar Stephanus, Thomas Mar, Titus, priests, deacons, evangelists, faithful members of our church and seekers of the faith. Lord, we remember all who exercise authority in various countries, especially in our country. Give to each one your Holy Spirit that they may diligently work in your vineyard. Lord, have mercy. Lord, we remember the 
the mother of our Lord, the Blessed Virgin Mary, the holy apostles, the prophets, the preachers, the evangelists, the martyrs, the confessors, and all the saints. Lord, remember the three councils of Nicaea, Constantinople, and Ephesus, and all the holy fathers who participated in them. Make us worthy to follow in their footsteps. Lord, we also remember all the faithful who are departed and fallen asleep in the true faith. Grant that we also may with them be counted worthy of the remission of our sins and be gathered into your heavenly kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, we thank you for the beautiful universe you have created and the life and possibilities of it. Forgive us, O Lord, for we have distorted the universe for our greed and selfishness. Help us, O Lord, to be good and faithful stewards for the fulfillment of your will. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. The blessings of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with you all now and forever. And with you also. Brothers and sisters, we must pray to the Lord always for reconciliation and peace and for his blessings and mercies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord for unity in the church and harmony between all people and communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Let us pray for peace in our families and grace in our hearts that we may be strengthened in faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Let us pray for the... Let us pray for recovery of health for the sick, comfort for the distressed, deliverance for prisoners, safety for travelers, unity and love for those who are estranged. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, let us give glory to God the Father, Lord of all, worship His only begotten Son, and praise His holy and life-giving Spirit. O Lord of all blessings, we commit our lives into your keeping and pray for your blessings. Gracious God, have mercy upon us and bless us. Let us spend a few moments in intercessory prayer. Especially let us remember our St. Thomas, Marthomas here in Church, Bombay. Let us remember all of its activities and all its members both young and old. May God continue to stretch forth his right hand and uplift, strengthen, and bolden all of us. Let us remember the older generation, especially those who are having a hard time to make it here to the church these days that God may bring them comfort and strength. Let us pray for the youth of this parish, especially those who are engaged in exams and searching for jobs, looking to go abroad, or looking to enter into married life, that God may continue to strengthen them, help them, and show them paths. Let us pray for our Vigar, Reverend Ipan Abraham, Auntie Kochima, and their children, that God continue to bless them and strengthen them. Let us pray for the outgoing office bearers, executive committee, and those who will be coming in. That God give them strength and ability for the upliftment and betterment of our community and this church. Let us remember the JM and SJM the uh, social outreach program of this parish, that God continue to strengthen it, especially as they engage in the Koror school 
and in volunteer work at Cooper Hospital. Allow those who come in proximity be blessed and strengthened and see the loving goodness of our God. Let us put forward our own personal prayers. All this we ask in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. O God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, make perfect offerings and oblations presented before you. Sanctify our bodies, souls, and spirits, so that with pure and confident hearts we may address you as God and Father and pray, our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. May your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us as we are daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but deliver us from the evil one. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the grace, mercy, and blessings of the holiest and glorious Trinity, uncreated, self-existent, eternal, adorable, one in essence, be with you all, dearly beloved, now and forever. And also with you, O holy and glorious Trinity, have mercy upon us. Holy things for holy people. Holy is the one Father, holy is the one Son, holy is the one Spirit. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. One from the beginning, forever and ever. Amen. The one Holy Father who created the world in His mercy is with us. Amen. The one Holy Son who saved it by His precious passion is with us. One living Holy Spirit who makes perfect and fulfills all that is and that has been is with us. May the name of the Lord be blessed as in the beginning, both now and forever. from the dead. Therefore we praise and exalt you. O Lord, every mouth shall sing your praise. O Lord, who gathers up the children of Adam from everywhere, bless us and help us. O Son of God, your death has changed our death into life. 
Raise us from the dust so that we may ever praise you. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is worthy of glory and worship forever. From the beginning and from generation to generation, may he be praised. Hallelujah. O Son of God, who came for our salvation and will come again for our resurrection and for the renewal of our race, grant, we pray, forgiveness of our sins to your servants through your own atoning sacrifice. Amen. O Lord God, graciously bless these your children who partake of your most precious body and blood, which was given on Calvary for the forgiveness of sins, that they may abide in your presence forever. Amen. The blessings of Jesus Christ, our great God and Savior, be on those who bear these sacred mysteries, on those who dispense them, on those who receive them, and on all who have participated and who shall participate in them. The grace of God be on us all, both now and forever. the holy body and holy blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken and shed on Calvary for the forgiveness of sins, are given to you for the health of your body and soul.
Praise be to your Lord, our God, forever. Praise be to your Lord Jesus Christ. May the holy blood in which we have partaken be not for our condemnation, but for life and salvation to us all. O oh God, grant us your blessing. Thanks for your mercy towards us. We praise you, O Lord, because in your abundant mercy you have fed and strengthened us with the precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have thereby made us one with Him and with all the members of His mystical body. We pray you to give us grace to continue in that holy fellowship and ever to offer glory and praise to you and to your only begotten Son and to your Holy Spirit. Amen. Bless us, O Lord Almighty. You are our God, the Creator. Show to us ever the way of salvation. Our God, helper of all. O oh Lord, bless us, your servant who has ministered in your holy presence. Accept the praises and petitions of us, your people, and pardon our offenses. Enable us to receive your gifts and blessings, and send us with your peace. My beloved brothers and sisters, I commend you to the grace and blessings of the holy and glorious Trinity. Go now in peace and serve the Lord with the gifts and blessings you have received from the atoning sacrifice of the Lord. Amen. You both near and far who are saved by the victorious cross of the Lord and sealed with the holy seal of baptism, this holy trinity will forgive you your sins and comfort your souls. Amen. Pray for me, my brothers and sisters, weak and sinful as I am, that I may obtain mercy, go in peace, filled with gladness and rejoicing. May the Lord accept your ministrations and help us by your prayers. Amen.